right? So there's, there's like, it's like everything. There's so many ways to skin a cat and it's just figuring out what works best for you like that. I've always hunkered in on video because I like one to many. I want to make something once and have a ton of people be able to see it. And so it's like every time I make something, I know I'm going to have somewhere between 50 and a few thousand people see it. And it just works for me all the time. And just like you were saying, it's all just about educating the right people, whether it's the investor themselves, the realtor that knows investors, the builders themselves, or the builders that know investors. And the more at-bats you get, the more opportunity you're going to get. Welcome to the LO Code Podcast, where we talk about everything from marketing to just general loan bullshit. episode of the LO Code podcast. We are with Michael. We're going to be talking about the right way to build a business with DSCR. Hey, what's going on, man? I'm good. Thank you for having me on. Heck yeah, dude. Well, a lot of people want to get into DSCR. They want to get into investment. They want to get into portfolio loans. A lot of people are afraid of it. A lot of people do it wrong. So I know you've built pretty much your entire business on DSCR. So what would you say are the top things that you see people doing wrong when it comes to this loan type? I personally think the biggest thing, um, especially as, you know, more people on our team try to get involved is, uh, you know, putting their best foot forward in the wrong direction. And what I mean by that is, um, you know, energy is there, uh, you know, the, the willpower is there, um, they're attentive, but they just don't know enough about the guidelines from multiple different lenders and the, each lender has their own DSCR product with their own investors on the secondary market. And as obviously the Martin uh, market tightens up, those guidelines change. And to know each and everyone's guidelines on 50, 60 different lenders is very hard to do. So that's why, you know, you try to stick to a, a handful and, and know the ins and outs, um, like the back of your hand. Uh, but I would say knowing the, the very, very little fine detail uh, lines of the guidelines to to uh, know like the back of your hand. I think that's a, a very, very hard one for a, a new LO or someone new in the DSCR space to, to really grasp. No, that makes a lot of sense. So would you say that when you don't know the fine details of each product and each investor, you could have some that you could get through that you end up not doing or failing on. And then you lose a relationship when it could have been one that would have just rocked through if you knew those details. Correct. Um, and normally you have enough time to pivot with that lender and go on to another one. Um, certain situations, you know, timing doesn't call for it, but um, I, there's one instance it, it happened to me when uh, guidelines started tightening up because the market uh, lender that I used pretty frequently had a new guideline of um, title could not be changed within six months prior to doing a cash out or purchase. So they wanted to add a partner that might have had more liquidity, might have had more experience, and you just make an addendum on the operating agreement and you're good. In a normal market, this lender had no issues with it. And then even in the market, most lenders don't have an issue with it. But it was, you know, they tightened up on some guidelines and that just happened to be one of them. And, uh, you know, we were able to pivot. But, you know, even doing them, that's not one I would have known about. That's not an email the lender would have sent out saying, hey, this is our one little change to uh, a DSCR guideline. So, you know, there's little things that happen like that. Right. And just be having the ability to, to know what's going to happen and then be able to switch and move and find something else if you need to. Correct. And that's what's, you know, you just kind of got to be uh, well-rounded with a, a handful of lenders. Um, you know, there's lenders that specialize in Airbnb. There's lenders that specialize in month to month and, you know, long-term uh, in your personal name versus an LLC. So it's just kind of, Again, you got to know what direction you want to run and 
specialize in that and then expand. Most people just run to investors not knowing if they you know, want creative financing, if they want bridge loans, if they're adding rehab or Airbnb. It just, there, there's just so much besides a DSCR loan. No, that's really good. So it's like DSCR is just one of the feathers in your cap. You have a bunch of others based off of the needs of your clients. Correct. It's, it's a very, very broad term. <laughs> there's a lot of different directions. Everybody was like, I just want a magic bullet. And there's just no such thing as a magic bullet. Like in any field, any career, you have to have multiple bullets to do the job, but you can pick a niche. Like your niche has been investors. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's, you know, you talk about an investor that my, my first investor I worked with did three cash out refinances to do two purchases. And I was like, what am I doing working with a first time home buyer that's going to buy one home every three to 10 years, you know, if that, uh, and that's kind of what, you know, made me pivot and want to work with investors. Um, but that was a very, back. yeah, that was a very easy one. He was very, uh, vanilla with the way he, he ran his business. So it was an easy first one to do. And, you know, I've failed many times, uh, after that, try, not failed, but, uh, understanding the guidelines as we all do getting into a new uh, niche or even as a new LO um, or any job, you know, you always fail and you learn from it. So, um, but that was a very, you know, first successful one. I think that's what kind of drove the motivation and intensity to keep pursuing it. Yeah. That's usually how it goes is you find that success and go, Oh, I like this. Let's, let's dig into it. So let's dig into that. What, <laughs> what excites you about like the portfolio side of things on top of just investors that, you know, keep coming back? Are there other things that you find like a competitive advantage with compared to going like traditional loan types? Like I'd like to really see like what you're feeling about this, this type of a market. I like the relationships that come with it. Um, they're business owners, they're, investors that own their own construction companies, um, 100%, you know, full-time investors, uh, part-time. Inv- it's just, there's so many different personalities and, you know, backgrounds to each investors and how they got there. And it's, um, you know, I, I appreciate the stories that people tell me when they come into it. Um, and as I get more and more, uh, deep into working with investors and going to, you know, the meetups and everything like that. It's just very, very um, unique situations that people bring to the table. And and the further you get into it, the more creative you're going to find people because investors will talk. And, you know, now it's not just DSCR loans of closing in an LLC on a 30 year fixed rate. Um, you know, back when we were doing those, you know, three and a half to 4% for an investor, no income, no tax returns. It's just, it was mind boggling that rates were that low doing that. Um, but now people want to have the seller, uh, carry back the down payment in second position with, you know, only bringing closing costs. So again, no tax returns, 30 year fixed closing in an LLC, um, you know, people are, are, are getting much more creative, you know, pre 2008 and, you know, it, it's just exciting to see people want to do that, even though there's a very, very small percentage that becomes successful in, you know, having those types of deals funded. No, that's really cool. So what have you seen in terms of rates? How have the rates differed during this transition compared to like traditional 30 year fixed con, uh, conventional FHA VA is there been a drastic increase or has it been less of a hit so again this is where the broad spectrum of DSCR uh, kind of falls into play because we can actually get a DSCR loan for a client uh, investor no tax returns and none of that at a better rate than a conventional 20% down loan. Same down payment, 
you know, credit score might play into a factor in that, but in PA, there's a law where if the loan amount is under 278,000 for a DSCR loan, you can't charge a prepayment penalty. So without a prepayment penalty, that's going to jack your rate up. Um, you know, I have, and even in this market right now with the rates increasing, people are, are electing to do a no prepayment penalty just because, you know, if it's 10 months or 15 months or 18 months, they don't want to be paying, uh, you know, three, four or 5% penalty to refinance once they do come down. Um, so there's a lot of investors doing, uh, or going that route, but it just depends on a, a credit score. Um, the LTV, uh, the resume, you know, how many properties they own, but generally DSCR is going to be higher. It was higher when the rates were lower, probably about 2%, but now, you know, you can find some lenders that are, are tightening that gap and, you know, it's could be more advantageous for a investor to get a DSCR loan than a conventional borrower that might have a 680 score going conventional. And, you know, some lenders might have their rate close to eight now. So it's, it's a very weird time. I'm sure right. <laughs> as you're seeing. So, well, that's, what's exciting about this is it all comes down to investors appetite and what they're willing to risk and what they feel is the risk threshold. And as it seems, it, you know, from this right now, things change. But right now, there's a lot of desire for high credit in score investors. And they're giving fantastic rates for that that are comparable to traditional now. And yep. it's almost like if you're doing what you're doing, you're in a great position because now you know it. And there's so, there's you're, there's such more demand and people are starting to understand this. Investors are starting to get savvy. Um, and I think that transitions into our next one. Do you notice working with investors, you get a lot more opportunities for referrals and meeting more investors when you do a great job? Yeah, that's kind of how I started out. Um, this one investor kind of, you know, spread the wildfire. And then as I started marketing the 30 year fix, three and a half percent, four percent investors, no income, close it in an LLC. Uh, I was kind of, you know, doing DSCR before it became the cool thing to do. Um, and while the rates were great, now as they've increased, um, invest, some investors want cash flow, maybe they're quitting their job or whatever, they need the monthly income. Most want long-term wealth. So as long as their DSCR is 1.15 or better, or even one or better, they're like, hey, we'll just refinance when the rates come down. But um, when you can kind of walk them through those scenarios, you know, becoming more of a financial planner, so to speak, in their investment world and portfolio, um, you're doing more than probably the, the previous person has done for them already. And then doing that, Yes, it just, you know, spider webs from there and, you know, investors are in coaching groups. So, you know, just like how this podcast, uh, you know, one person on, on one side of the, the country be like, hey, you know, uh, this Ryan guy has great information and they're talking to somebody in California and, you know, it's just and investors know investors everywhere throughout the nation. So, yes, it does trickle pretty quickly if you do a good job. Yeah, that's that's really cool. Um, and I'm, I'm sure a lot of people are wondering too, is how do you even get started in finding people that need these type of loans? Like what, what worked for you? So for me, it was a different time because it was easy to sell a three and a half percent rate, no tax returns, no doc, closing an LLC, 30 year fix. Most people at that time were doing, working with a bank, credit union, what have you, five-year arm, 10-year arm, amortized over 20 to 25 years. Uh, having the 30-year amortization obviously helped with the cash flow, you know, three and a half, four percent. No investor's probably ever going to see that again in their life. I don't, well, don't want to say ever, but highly unlikely. Um, so it was easy to market. Um, it, it was a different time, but now it's you know realtors 
You know, your, your realtors are a, a huge connection. Um, never want to, you know, distance yourself away from your realtor partners because they will hook you up with your current clients. They'll hook you up with your investors. Um, I would, you know, I still go to investor meetups and, and they happen everywhere. You know, just because you doesn't, you don't hear about it does not mean it's hap not happening. Um, those are, are great. Um, you know, your shirt, my shirt, uh, you're, you're a walking billboard. So you go into somewhere and, you know, you rep your company. It's a great talking point. That because a lot of people, they don't understand the power of, of your shirt and you come in in a suit and a tie. You're just like everybody else there. You know, it's like, they don't know what you do. You look good. Right. But when you wear something that makes you stand out, you have way more conversations, way more. And it opens the door without you having to go up and like, hey, what's going on? What do you want to talk about? It's just when someone comes up to you and say, hey, you, what do you got? What are you doing? What's your rates? It's like, bam, yeah. conversation, baby. Let's go. Right? And, and it's just how, I mean, I'm very direct and blunt, but some people can be a little bit more subtle with it. But uh, we just bought a house in May and finished our basement patio, did a bunch of stuff. And most people that are, I don't say most, but a lot of people I've met that are in the, the skilled trade uh, industry want to either get into investing or already have investment properties. So another play, good place to start, start, you know, cold call in the uh, construction companies um, or, or go to, you know, meetups for, for that type of industry. It's just, th there's so many ways to do it. It's, it's not really what's going to work best, but it, how can you inject your personality and, and, you know, the way you conduct business into the, the life of an everyday person? Yeah. No, and I love that because even if those builders aren't necessarily looking for what you do, their clients are. They know somebody, yep. <laughs> right? So there's there's like it's like everything. There's so many ways to skin a cat and it's just figuring out what works best for you. Like that I've always hunkered in on video because I like one to many. I want to make something mm -hmm. once and have a ton of people be able to see it. And so it's like every time I make something, I know I'm going to have somewhere between 50 and a few thousand people see it and yeah. it just works for me all the time. And just like you were saying, it's all just about educating the right people, whether it's the investor themselves, the realtor that knows investors, the builders themselves or the builders that know investors. And the more at bats you get, the more opportunity you're going to get. Yeah. It's, you're never, you're always going to have to transition. It, it, you know, you, you'll run one direction, that direction might dry up or you might feel like it's dried up. And if you change the way you perceive something, um, you know, obviously your outcome is going to be different. So there's, it's it just trial and error constantly. But that's in, like in anything, you know, anything you want to pursue, you know, you got to see what's going to work for you because the way I get mortgages is a lot different than the way you get mortgages we're both successful, but it doesn't mean, you know, your way is better or my way is better. It's just our personalities, what works for us. And I think where it gets really exciting is you learn from other people and say, Hey, what, what's a little piece of what they're doing that I could add it to the way that I'm doing it. Right. And it's just like, now you're just expanding the irons that you have in the fire. You always start with what you gravitate towards. And then you go on to the next thing and say, Oh, that's interesting. I want to add a piece of that into my strategy, my marketing, my outreach. And that's where you really start to see that exponential growth when you start to find what works and then expand out from there slowly, sometimes fast. Some people just do it fast, right? So that's, uh, you know, back to the, the first question of the downfall and talking about growth is I grew way too fast, too quick. And it forced me to uh, organize faster than what I've done and hire an assistant um, just because it. I went from five loans in, con in the pipeline to 40 in probably a matter of three to four weeks. Um, and being new, newer at doing them, 
Um, that's where the learning curve hit very, very quick was knowing the guidelines, knowing how to organize it, know which account reps are going to hold my hand and which ones are going to say, no, I'm too busy to, you know, work with somebody new. Um, and then that, you know, again, it was another relationship. It was a relationship built, um, you know, with a lender that, hey, you help me. And now I, I refer other loan officers to that AE just for for what they've done to, to help me grow. And uh, it's just it, it comes quick if it's, you know, if that person has done it correctly. Yeah, no, that's really cool. So. With all of that said, how have you seen your business affected with these rates? Are you are you doing a half to a third of the business you were doing, like most people that do traditional, or have you not seen as big of a hit? No, it's um, I'm at twenty seven in the pipeline. So uh, the most I've ever had was forty seven last year. Um, I'm still busy. It's a lot. I wouldn't say a lot faster now, but um, there's lenders that can close DSCR loans in, you know, three weeks. There's some that take two months. Uh, finding those ones that turn over in three weeks will, you know, keep your pipeline down, but it's a lot more efficient. Um, whereas last year when everyone was flooded, it doesn't matter, you know, if you were doing DSCR commercial, whatever, it just rates were the rates everybody was buying. So, um, you know, those took a lot longer. So my pipeline was always, you know, a lot healthier, but, um, you know, now we got bridge lenders that are closing in five to 10 days. So it just, you know, it's a lot quicker. You don't hold a lot more in your pipeline, but again, investors, it, it might not be cash flowing now because the rates are so high. So it's, Hey, we're, you know, going to attack long-term wealth and, when the rates come back down, we'll we'll take a little bit of money out to go buy another property and get in a 30-year fix for uh, a lower rate. Um, but again, as long as they're not losing money, nine times out of ten they're buying. So it just and that, again, that's another reason why I like working with investors is they never stop. Their mm -hmm. portfolio is always, always the going to grow. Yeah, yes, sir. No, that's, that's awesome. Well, this is really insightful. I loved how you kind of broke it down and how it's been so successful for you. If the people watching this want to contact you, if they need a little bit more, more help when it comes to DSCR, what's the best way for them to reach you? Uh, I normally work better with text just because it, we're either, you know, on a video, we're on a phone call, talking to a client in a meeting. Um, so phone number is 610-914. 7527. Um, you know, we'll have Ryan throw it uh, um, in the caption as well. Uh, but yeah, text normally works best. And, you know, I just, there's so many people that try to, to get into DSCR without doing research and out doing guidelines. Um, some loan officers create a bad name for themselves. And, you know, some account executives don't work with uh, a handful of uh, company or, or, or people just because it, they're so green that it takes more time to coach um, than it does to actually do the loan and create a quote. Um, so we, again, we have certain lenders that will help, you know, I love helping myself. I mean, that's the, the long-term goal is to become a coach and kind of put mortgages onto the side. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm open. If anyone wants to learn, uh, you know, I'll definitely help you out. Dude, that's awesome. That's a, that's a great offer right there. So man, we learned a lot about DSCR, different investment products, you know, the just opportunity that there is working with investors. And a lot of people have just poo pooed these away. Um, it's just like tough deals that nobody wants to do. But if you have a strategy like yours, and you put it into play and you and you have the right network of investors, it's a very sound business model that just keeps giving. It's not, it, it's definitely uh, takes a lot of tenacity and persistence. Um, investors love their money. They're, and everyone, you know, for the most part, a lot of people shop even on conventional mortgages, especially as the rates increase, um, you know, people will chase the, uh, the eighth different on percent, but uh, investors, 
they are very, very good at shopping. So even my my investors that have been constant um, returns and gave me a bunch of referrals, they still shop for the best deal. And I tell them to. I didn't, you know, it, it's their money. They need to make money. You know, if they do it full time, it's their livelihood. Like, hey, if you find a, a better rate, that's fine. I, you know, no hard feelings. Um, but they shop and they find the deals. So that's, you know, another thing. It's just, it's not always marketing to find new clients. It's marketing to call real, uh, lenders and, and newer companies and always researching to find the best rates because as soon as somebody, another LO finds a better rate, you're cut out. Yep. Or, or it comes down to finding the, the true pain points of those investors. Like, Hey, I'm going to lose this deal if I can't close in three weeks. Hey, we can get yep. you in. It's, the rate's going to be a little higher because these people work on speed. And so that's when, the, the, like you said, sales is a big proponent of working with investors. So if you're just an order taker and not truly knowledgeable about the products and how they work and can sell it, it's not going to be a good fit for people that aren't willing to take that extra step and learn these products and learn how to sell it. Correct. And there's, you know, again, it just comes with doing, um, talking about speed, we can do bridge loans, uh, either if it's just a purchase turnkey, or if there's rehab involved, we can close, you know, I closed one in 72 hours on a rush file. So if somebody wants, you know, the cash offer five days, you know, 72 hours, whatever to close quick. And then we go around and do delayed financing 80% on, the uh, the purchase price, or if even they have the um, they want to do rehab, we can do an ARV on uh, 90 day seasoning. You know, there's ways to do it, but again, it, that's just time in working with uh, DSCR loans and investors, knowing you know which routes to go, what people are looking for. You know, a lot of there's some investors that you know don't know uh, an avenue to go until. You tell them and then they build their business around that. So it's just, there's a lot more than just a, a no income documentation loan. 100%. And that's, that's the beauty of this is the more you dive in and become an expert at it, the more valuable you become as an advisor. And so that's what you're doing. You're advising these investors of how to keep as much of their money and their investment as possible. And it's not just rate. It's a lot of factors that go into it. Speed of closing a deal, rate, terms, cost, when they can refi, um, and that's what your job is to do. Like you, like you said, you go and you research and you put a plan together for each client that's going to solve as many, if not all, of their problems better than somebody else, and then that's why they choose you. Yeah, there's. I just met with an investor this morning, and uh, he uses other people's money to make money. He's got, you know, a uh, pretty crazy uh, personal financial statement himself, but he was like, you know, if I put 20% here, 20% there, 20% there, you know, my liquidity goes down. So why not take a little less profit, you know, use someone else's money for this one, someone else's money for this one, someone else's money for this one, still make money. And so he gets just, in more deals. Correct. Correct. So again, it's just understanding what people want to do and then how you can put yourself into their business plan to show them how to make more money. Because ultimately, if you can tell an investor how to make more money, then you got them. Yeah, I love it, dude. Well, this was a great conversation. I hope people watching this really opens their mind to the possibilities and opportunity of doing these type of investor and portfolio loans. And dude, huge thanks to you for coming on and sharing this knowledge. And we'll uh, pop your number below again if people have questions and need to reach out to you. You said you're available to help them out. So, dude, thanks again. No problem. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me uh, on the podcast. I appreciate it. Great time. Heck yeah. Till next time, buddy. All right. Take care, guys.